Well, welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. Apologize for the delay in getting some videos out, but we've had some things going on at home that uh, are changing, changing our life. We're moving some extra family members in, and that's requiring making uh, uh, changes to our home uh, physically to to accommodate that. So that uh, that's eaten up a lot of time, and just on top of that we've had as, as well as most of the country we had that super cold spell come through and that made it unbearable to get out here and and try and have any relief time playing with cars oh, so. aside from all that i've got uh, i got a few things i want to get done out here in the shop and i thought i'd go over them with you and then we've got some products that came in from a couple couple of sponsors so i'm going to try and show you some of those over the next few weeks and get those out to you in the meantime i have bought myself a evolution cold cut saw and i'll introduce you to that in a minute but i need to make a stand for it and for all the years i've had the abrasive saws and everything i just set them on the ground and i cut or i set them on whatever table is handy or a tailgate or whatever and I'm tired of that, so I'm going to build a saw station. Whiteboard is we're going to try and go over my design uh, plan. The things that I, I know I want is a, uh, and I'm a terrible artist, so forgive me. I want a tabletop, and we'll do this in expanded metal. Um, I want hinged on each side. A fold up extension. So we'll draw this one down. Okay. And then we're going to add some rollers to these. And I, oh, see, terrible draw. Add some rollers to these. And I think the easiest way to get those is I'm going to go buy some of the Harbor Freight. Uh, freestanding rollers and I'm just going to take the rollers off and put them on here. could probably make something, go get some bearings and make something, but I'm looking for easy. I want the table that the saw actually sits on, and I'm drawing these completely out of scale. I want this to be able to rotate because I don't want to set my steel on my table and then have to try and swing the steel you know, especially you're working on a 20 foot stick and you're trying to cut, you know, two feet off of one end. You're trying to swing 18 foot of steel around so you can cut a 45 degree angle. So I want to be able to pivot the saw and leave the steel in place. That way you can do cuts from all directions. Now, the rotating part does not have to be the, uh, it doesn't have to index like a miter saw. Um, we'll let the saw itself, the, the fence on the saw, do the indexing for the angle, and then we'll just make the saw line up with the steel. So, um, so we got to do some kind of rotation there. We need it to be about, uh, and kind of guessing, or, or about 36 inches to the top of the saw deck. So not necessarily to the table, but to the saw deck itself. So the table will probably be a little lower. I want a back splash, for lack of a better word, that will catch most of the sparks. And the reason this is expanded metal is I want to put a funnel down here that we can catch all of the as much of the metal back into as possible. Um, and then lastly, we get our frame built out there. I want it on wheels so that it can be put, stowed, put away, because I don't, I don't use them that often, but I do want it to be uh, movable. And I think that catches all of my, uh, all of my design requirements. We just have to come up with the final measurements. I don't think this needs to be very big. If it's 36 inches tall, if we go 24 inches wide, we'll have to look at the saw base to make sure that would work. But I think we could go 24 by 24. And if that's the case, these wings can be 
somewhere between 30 and 36 inches long and that's based strictly on if it's hinged here what doesn't hit the wheels so that it'll it'll continue to roll um, backsplash should probably be 12 to 18 inches tall and then just some little side skirts that won't interfere with metal sliding in and out you know so we're not hitting them all the time that's it that's my design um, I'm thinking we make this out of probably one and a half inch 1.5 inch uh, square tube and I think I have some of that so that's gonna be next is go measure up whatever we have and see what we can build this out of as it turns out I do have quite a bit of this inch and a half square tubing um, in all kinds of lengths still even though I've built the gates up top and the uh, uh, steel racks and everything else recently with it I still have I believe enough to do the whole project certainly enough for the main chassis the main box and then we'll see what we have as far as getting the uh, wings built um, as long as I don't have the hinges here that I know of and I don't have the rollers, and I don't have the rotisserie. I'm kind of thinking it's something like a lazy Susan bearing is what I'm after. And I think what I want to try and do is offset my funnel to one side um, so that I can use the other area down here and I can put my, my abrasive saw down there as for storage. And then you'd be able to swap the saws out depending on the work. I'm sure they won't be quite the same height. That may cause an issue with getting the height right for the, for the rollers. Pick the one that has the tallest base, design the, the dimensions for everything around that tall base, and then if need be when I want to put the other one up there, I can slide another piece of steel or a, uh, a piece of wood, plywood or whatever, underneath the saw to get the, the level right. For now, what we need to do is uh, we need to unbox the Evolution saw and get a good look at it and get some measurements on the two saws. And then we can kind of finalize our design here. Okay, so here's what I bought. It's the uh, Evolution 15 inch saw, the S380, which I, I believe the only difference between it and the, the I think the other one is just called a 380. Um, they have some smaller saws, but in the 15 inch, it's interesting that that was loose. Uh, I believe the difference is this one has the cast base versus just a sheet metal base. It's kind of important to me just for durability. Now this does come with this with a uh, kind of multi-purpose blade for cutting steel. Um, probably get a couple other blades for cutting aluminum and stainless but, but I picked this saw based on the recommendations and the price the, it's with it going on sale it just the price made it just right to go ahead and get it bought and uh, and then once it, once it got here it's been here about a week I was like I didn't want to just set it on the ground next to the other saw and continue cutting and crawling around on the ground so we're gonna build a saw station now this definitely looks like it has a thinner base than the DeWalt uh, abrasive saw, but we're going to measure those out and that'll give us our first dimension as to how much room we need to leave so that the top of this base is about 36 inches off the ground with our casters, which I believe I have a set of casters we can use for it. If you remember when I built my workbench uh, and I mounted the toolboxes in there, I took a whole bunch of casters off there, so I've got quite a few heavy duty beefy casters that we'll be using. About exactly three and a half. Yeah, three and a half inches off the floor for the DeWalt. And there's about a, it's not even about. There's one inch of difference between the height of the Evolution saw table to the height of the DeWalt saw table. So what we want to do is build our saw station to where the DeWalt table would be 36 inches off of the floor this one then is going to be 35 inches we'll build to the dewalt saw and then adapt for the evolution saw since it's shorter okay well i knew i wanted one of these or i was pretty sure and i hoped i would be happy with it 
So this is uh, eighth inch thick, one and a half inch square tubing. And I'll keep this in real time. I, I can't believe I have spent years using an abrasive saw instead of one of these. After using this, I honestly cannot tell you when I'm going to want to use the abrasive saw again. I'm sure there are instances where that is the proper tool to use. But my goodness, this is just amazing. I cut all the uh, parts for this uh, stand. We've got those out over here behind me we're gonna start welding them up but I had no idea I, I watched every video I could on YouTube and everybody said how great they were and, but you, you always kind of take it with a grain of salt and do it again take it with a grain of salt but I'm telling you now this is an amazing tool whether you buy the evolution whether you buy the DeWalt or the Makita or there's a dozen brands out there don't buy a abrasive saw buy one of these if it's your first saw save the money from spending on that and just double up it it's twice as expensive but three times faster way less mess it is a little noisy but it's not that bad so that's my two cents worth on that let's go back I've got the first uh, side laid out and we'll go ahead and get started welding some parts up all right so what I've got here is one side laid out and we ended up going from uh, 24 by 24 so that everything will pivot and the arm, the uh, saw will open up all the way and everything. I ended up going to a 30 by 30 square table. And then this is gonna be the lower leg that will create a shelf for us. And I'm gonna space it up one inch from the end of the legs due to the depth of the DeWalt saw, which is where I got started from, uh, being three and a half inches, the casters I'm using, are six and a half inches. We end up with a 26 inch leg for the table. So we're gonna get these tacked together, then we'll pull the clamps, and then we'll tack on, the, the way I've got it set up is the top one will fit edge to edge, and uh, so they're 30 inches, and, the, and I 45 them, I put a miter on those, and then these are square cut, and they'll be square inside. So get this tacked, get the top rail on, then we'll make the other main frame part and then we'll attach them all together. Alright guys, we're back at it. Uh, it's the next morning and as you can hear there's a truck running in the background. They're getting concrete ready for that other project going on. Um, I did get everything tacked together and that's that's all I've done is tack it. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and put my plates for each of the four casters uh, on the bottom here of the legs and we'll get a shelf built while it's easy to get to it. And while we're doing that, we'll start welding up all these joints. And then I'm kind of trying to hold off as long as possible for this upper uh, deck, basically because I want to keep it flush with the top of these bars, but I want to—I don't know how thick the uh, turntable thing that I got is. That should be here sometime today. So I'm kind of going to just drag my feet on that, but I'll get everything else welded up, get the casters on it and the lower shelf. And we can start building the uh, duct that we can put in here so that all this scrap ends up in a bucket. Quick little scribe tool. Get uh, made by Malco. A60 is the part number that you can. It's got just a little sharp screw in there. Scribe it out. Gives you a couple nice lines. 
lay everything out by. This saw comes with a chip tray that slides in here, and we basically built our own trip chip tray. So I'm going to take this uh, additional cover off so that all the chips will drop straight down. Uh, I went ahead and got my funnel built and put some expanded metal here. So the next thing will be I'll figure out how to mount the uh, uh, turntable piece and get a stand built for it or a, uh, a plate built that the saw can sit on kind of been off and on on this project all day between the other subcontractors showing up to do work out on the house up there so um i haven't gotten as far as i'd have liked but we did i did get the funnel built uh, i got the bottom shelf in all right well it's been another couple days and uh, i made it over to harbor freight picked up some rollers and we're gonna build our, our folding wings or whatever we're going to call those. And in the process of looking at this, I think rather than trying to make the rotisserie part of this, the lazy Susan part of this, um, adjustable in, in that we would stick plywood under this saw to match up with the DeWalt saw, um, I think what I'm going to do is just make it to where when these fold up, the rollers themselves are adjustable because we're not ever going to be at the height of either of the tables unless we were to sink this down into the inside of the top here. And I, I really don't want to do that. Um, so I can just adjust where I mount the, the table out here where it hinges and then make the roller adjustable so that all the way down it be tight with this one. And then when you put the other one on, you just raise them up a little bit. So. I think that's going to be my plan. And then I'm also thinking I'm probably only going to need to put one on each fold-up part as compared to the drawing where I had one here and one out here at the end. Just because if you're only working with a piece of steel this long, the table can hold it. And if you start getting into the five, six foot length, that's when you're wanting one of those, either an outfeed, you know, a roller or a, to help stabilize the material. So I've got the funnel done now. I do want to do a little bit of tack welding on places where I folded it over and all that. So I'm going to put a roller on each side and then I already had one of these stands, but about three. And then we're going to make a clip back here on the back to where we can hang them so that when you, whenever you put this away, they just get put away with it. Then I'll probably put a hook back here on the back also so you can roll up the cord for whichever saw is on top and uh, make it to where that's put away as well. We're going to have some more noise today because we're waiting on another concrete truck for these other projects. So that should be, should have been here two hours ago, but 
So here's the bearing I got. Um, it's uh, six inches square, and it looks like it's about five sixteenths to three eighths of an inch thick, but it's uh, supposed to hold 500 pounds. So we're gonna cut us a piece of steel that will fit inside the table here, and then mount that on it, and another piece of steel that's at least as wide as whichever uh, be the DeWalt saw it looks like. So the base will fit completely on it, and then we'll get it to pivot about where the uh, fence is here, so so that it's pivoting back in this area, not front or back, but which is pretty close to the center of the saw. Okay, so 18 is 21 by 13, and it becomes our top that the saw will sit on. And then we've got to cut out a strip that's going to go across the saw to hold the, the bottom side of the bearing. And this piece, I'm going to make it just a little wider than the bearing, so it's going to be 7 inches wide and then 27 inches long so it can fit the hole inside. edge of the saw in three and a half inches from the edge of the table and this piece is going to go where the expanded metal starts so it's an inch and a half so we're going to start in two inches that's the difference two inches at the front of the saw I want the bearing 12 inches from the front of the saw which means we're at 14 the center of that. And this bearing is about six and it's almost six and an eighth. Six and a sixteenth on that side. So we'll just come back three inches and we'll call that close enough. So this is the edge of our bearing there. I'm just going to eyeball it left to right, center to get it centered. And we're just going to tack weld it on. So there's the fronts. Mark these. Any side on this table could be a front, although I've got the casters back here going that way, so I figure you're going to kind of drive it like this. So I'm going to put this on in this orientation. What we're going to do is now we've got it, I kind of got, I probably should have waited, not welded up every one of the pieces of the expanded metal. We'll cut those loose and cut that strip out where this is, and then we'll set this down inside the table far enough that this would be laying on top of here and then we'll come back and put a couple shims under it to hold it up to where this can spin without being you know completely above the table height and only reason to do that is I want to sink this flush there's which is just I guess aesthetics it's just what I'm looking at for the way I'd like it to look um, functionally it's not going to add anything to to move it down inside there versus welding it on right where it's at. All right, we got some, heat, some spacers are all the same thickness holding this up. And it's pretty good even by eyeball. It's nice and even down both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack the four corners and check it again. And then we'll put a bead across here and probably just push this down just a little bit and go ahead and weld it to it.
made another frame and I went 22 and a half inches wide, which is enough to get below or between the casters down here. And then I went 26 inches long, which clears the top of this swivel ca caster. So as the thing uh, turns and stuff, when the, when the table is folded down, it shouldn't hit the caster. I salvaged a hinge off of some doors that a uh, customer brought me that they want some stuff cut out of on the plasma table. Made it nice, I could salvage that hinge. And he brought me two of these so I can salvage one for the other side. And then this table, this uh, fold-up part is about an inch and a half, well, it is an inch and a half lower than the main tabletop. And what that does is allow when this is mounted, and I'm going to make it to where this is adjustable up and down. Um, when this is mounted, it can be anywhere from below the height of the saw table to, uh, and then you can come up and I'll make it to where it's got four or five inches of adjustment. We'll weld it from the bottom side here. And then once we get it welded on, um, we'll make a, uh, a, a, a brace of some sort to come down and lock in to hold it up level. Well, I've got the hinge stitch welded on. Get that out of the way. There we go. Well, that works nice to get it folded in and out of the way. Okay, so here's what I've got. I took that Harbor Freight roller. I cut the end off of where it adjusts. So I got the, and then I cut this arm. It was about yay long. And when we wanna do an angle cut, the material can still lay here. We need the, the 45 degree cut. You would rotate the saw. And clamp it down and you can see it's still roughly in the center of our roller. Um, I'm going to make another one just like this on the other side and then I'm thinking I'll probably, since I still have some expanded metal left, I'll probably go ahead and fill this in with expanded metal. But that's really just to catch your cuts, your drops. Um, and then finally I've got, I still need to figure out my my arm, I'm kind of almost thinking I'm going to make a curved arm that would come off of here and attach to one side or the other and then maybe use another screw like this where you could pull it up and it, as it comes up then you could just crank it down and tighten it up. So I talked about all kinds of possibilities for doing a support arm here and what I came up with is just a diagonal brace and a couple of clips to hold it in it's stored so it's not particularly elegant but uh, very simple and locks it in that puts this this piece level with the uh, level and although it's an inch and a half lower, that's what the rollers are here for to bring the steel across. So working product. back I've put in a couple of hooks for a few of these rollers so that for your longer material on either side you can have those out and I know I have another one of those things here somewhere I just got to go find it uh, put a little place to hang my cord um, and then of course the saw can still pivot we have a little shield to catch and try and deflect any of the uh, debris down into the funnel. And underneath this side, I've put a place to hold my abrasive blades and probably the other blades that I use. Uh, I made a simple support stand. And that holds this 
level and then you can adjust the wheels or the rollers to whichever saw height you have and uh, then just a basic little hook there to catch it. The shelf underneath can hold my other saw, whichever one I'm not using. And then of course, the uh, catch bucket for the funnel, which is just a plain old five gallon bucket. Nice thing with this cold cut saw is all the debris is cold as well, so catching it in a plastic bucket is not a problem. Um, I would love to have gotten this painted before I put this video out, but it's still just a little chilly here to try and get that done. Um, probably another month or so before we have consistent warm weather where I can take everything off of here and paint it, and I'll, I'll try and catch you up on it at some point in the future. But other than that, it's now ready for regular use. I used the cold cut saw a lot during the production of this table, and I love it. Um, I'm really not sure I'll be using the abrasive saw ever again, but I, mean, I may eventually go back and add some expanded metal into the wings, and that would be simply to provide a, a drop where whenever you're cutting stuff, it doesn't drop to the floor, it just drops to that table. There you go, all folded out, you got rollers, and everything is very functional. I'm very happy with the design and all the features that we added. So. Um, and then to keep the saw on this uh, rotisserie, I just put a few a few pegs welded on. These are shorter than the other saws. So those pegs are shorter than the other saw's table. So they won't interfere with that. And it just they're just there to keep the, the saw can't vibrate off the table. Well, that's it for my saw station project. I'm Jeff Allison. This is Allison Customs Project Car TV. And... I promise I'm going to be getting back on the cars here soon. I just, I've just had a few projects in mind that have been kind of gnawing at me to get them done, like the steel storage stuff and uh, the saw station, and there's actually another one that uh, another video for you. And then we'll get back to the cars here. Um, the Scout hasn't changed since the last episode, which was I believe 19. So please like and subscribe, hit that bell for notifications, and check back soon for more videos. See you again real soon.